Hello, everyone, and welcome to another chapter of Murder in Stratton County, written by Elizabeth Spoon and Rylan Mason, narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Chapter 10. What else could happen? Back in town, Diego was fast at work typing the next edition of the paper. He had to make up for a whole day of missed news because of the storm. There was a tap at the door. Diego? It was his mother, Maria. Have you eaten yet? She brought in a plate and a glass of milk for him, setting it down on the table next to him. Thanks, Mom. Maria just smiled and then thought to herself, he's so ambitious. Then, closing the door behind her, Diego then looked over at the plate. He picked up the milk, took a big gulp while grabbing half of the sandwich his mother had made, and continued typing. By this time, it was creeping into the afternoon hours, and he knew he had to go see Deputy Marks and try to get some information about the body he saw being brought into the morgue. Then, he could print, bundle, and be ready for delivery the following morning. The headline would read, Massive snowstorm hits the area. In other news, body found. He sat back in his chair and looked at the clock. He better get going if he was going to reach Mark's. Grabbing his coat and hat, he pulled on his boots and bundled up, reaching into his inside pocket just to make sure his notepad was still there. I will be back in a bit, Mom, he shouted from the bottom of the stairs. Okay, she responded. He went out the door, looking at his bike, which, of course, was covered and buried in a thick layer of snow. Guess I'm walking, he said. He headed down the sidewalk, stepping over huge piles of snow that had not been shoveled until he finally made his way to the station. Diego then climbed the stairs and entered the lobby and could see Deputy Marks sitting at his desk. Marks looked up, seeing Diego as he rang the intercom button. Hang on a minute, kid. Marks got up and then walked over to Dugan's office, sticking his head in the door. Dugan had just got back from seeing Brian and was going over things at his desk. Diego is here, sir. Dugan just looked up at him. I forgot to mention something to you, sir. The night they brought in the body... Diego saw us unloading it. Dugan then just put his head in his hands. Well, we can't tell him anything. Just tell him, yes, there was a body, but we can't release any information at this time. It might jeopardize the investigation. Actually, I'll do it myself. Marks, in agreement, went back and let Diego into the office. Have a seat, kiddo. Marks said as he gestured towards the chair in the front of his desk. Then Dugan came into the office and stood next to Marks. Okay, Diego, I know you want information. Marks told me what you saw. Now, you've got to listen to me, kid, because this is important. You can only print what I'm about to tell you. This is an ongoing investigation, and I could be putting someone in danger unless we know all the facts. Diego looked up from his notepad that he had pulled from his coat pocket. Do you understand? Dugan asked. Diego simply nodded. Yes, sir, I do. The sheriff confirmed that there had been a body found, but at this time no information was being released. There would, however, be an announcement made by the sheriff soon, pending confirmation of things, all in due time. Diego just simply jotted everything down in shorthand what the sheriff was saying. When do you think you will have that information? Diego asked. Only because the readers would be asking the same thing. We aren't sure, Dugan said. Diego, looking frustrated, simply just said, Okay. Sounding almost defeated. Now, we have work to do, Dugan said as he began to walk out of the office. Diego also stood up. Thank you for your time, sir, as he turned and made his way out of the station. 
As Diego started to make the walk back, he started to think about exactly what was going on. What was the sheriff hiding and why? He had to find out. He then made his way down the sidewalk, heading back to his office. He decided to go into the marketplace along the way. Shep looked up at him as he came through the doors. Oh, hey there, Diego. Shep smiled. Diego looked at him and waved, grabbing a pack of gum and put it on the counter. What are you up to, kid? Did you know they found a body? Shep just took a step back from the counter. Uh, uh, no, I didn't. Shep knew he couldn't tell him anything. And he didn't want his name in the paper. He then shouted for Alice, who was in the kitchen. Yeah? She came out holding a tray of brownies. Oh, hello, Diego. He repeated what he said to Alice about the body. Alice looked over at Shep, who was gesturing not to say anything. Alice shrugged. I didn't hear anything about a body, but Jeb Thompson's brother passed away. Diego's eyes got a little wider. What happened? Do you know? Shep spoke up. Something about an accident in the pass overnight during the storm, she said. Diego paid for his gum and looked at both of them. Thanks for the information on Jeb's brother, he said as he left the market in a bit of a hurry, thinking about all he had to type about. He decided to go see if Jeb was actually at the barber shop. The sign was hanging, closed. Shoot. Diego decided he better get back to his office. Returning from his walk and finally reaching his warm office, stepped in and started shaking off the cold from walking. He pulled off his boots and sat back down in front of his computer. He reached for the phone and dialed the barbershop's number. An answering machine picked up. Diego left a message for Jeb, inquiring for information and conveying his condolences. Now he just had to wait. He finished writing the story about the storm and began writing the second front page section about the body being found and it being confirmed by the sheriff. He didn't want to speculate about anything right now. He was busy typing another small report about the weather forecast when the phone rang. It was Jeb Thompson. He confirmed it was his brother in the accident and told Diego it would be a day or two before he would have the obituary for him to print. Diego thanked him and hung up the phone. He wrote a small paragraph announcing the death and the accident, but with little details, he still needed more to fill up the pages of the newspaper. He checked his emails and found a couple other stories that were happening around the county. He typed them up, hit the edit button on his keyboard. He was looking at pictures to add to the front page that had been emailed to him of the snow falling, picking one and then centering it on the page. That should do it. He hit edit and started editing the edition. He wondered about the body he saw them unload as the printer ran. Who was it? What had happened? He knew this was going to be a big story. Thanks so much for listening to Chapter 10. A short little snippet. I know Chapter 10 is short. But I like living, leaving cliffhangers. People don't like it, but I love it. <laughs> so, be ready for Chapter 11.